All right. Oh, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> As you can probably see. There we go. Everything is fixed now. Ah, all right. <laughs> ah, tiny little problem. Uh, screen was not running on the other side, and uh, everything went a little bit uh, too lately. <laughs> but um, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. So uh. You know, no further ado, uh, let's get started on this bad boy, shall we? I must say, though, uh, I'm very happy to announce that I'm going to be finally be able to draw on the uh, Mothog again with the grass. So, you know, we're going to be gra uh, doing a lot of grass today. And then, you know, after an hour, I will be leaving again. But I have some good news. Today it was raining all day long, so I was walking in the rain. And I must say that... It really cleans my mind, especially when you're totally soaked wet. It's like, <laughs> cold. <laughs> How does this work? Uh, this is only that one? All right, cool. So we can now put this in front. And now we're going to be looking at, you know, our lovely little grassly experience. So, if we draw grass, I will try to do this my very best. Um, What the heck? Hell, is that white? Why is there a white screen across the? Is that because the recording thing? Don't tell me it's the recording thing, isn't it? Because I selected it. Oh, I did. Um, hold on. No, it's not gone. Why are you not fully filling the screen? That is very obnoxious. E. All right. I'll be working with that, because it's not shown in the recording, so therefore, you know, it should not be that bad, but still, though, then it's a live stream, and then, eh, I need to be doing work, so therefore, you know, I shouldn't be doing this like that. Alright, let's, let's do this one. Oh, God. Um, so we're gonna add this into a group, and we're gonna start to see what happens if we now draw, so... I'm going to do a little sketch in red because, you know, red is quite visible, as you can see. I can do this uh, grass, and I can look at, like, how does this grass behave? Is this, like, good-looking grass, or do I want more grass, like, you know, effects on it? Or do I want to keep this kind of grass? You know, it's it's not that big of a grass, uh, grassy experience, but I do want to see, like, ah, does this look or represent quite correctly and therefore, you know, I need a clean view on it. And that's why we're going to go for red, because, you know, the red will show us better the amount of, you know, what we can do with it. And uh, we can still, you know, get other things up and running. And I'm doing the wrong uh, pencil. Oh, well, I'm using the wrong thing here for this. Oops. I was almost doing the wrong thing. That's not good. Alright. So now we have this. And this is not normal. What happened? 10. Alright. 3.6. Please tell me you're fixed. Yes, you're fixed. Absolutely lovely. Alright. Let's continue drawing and then see what is going about. So we're going to be drawing these beautiful little, you know, grass plums around around this thing and see how that acts or behaves around it so that we can you know implement a way of how we can walk with it so what we want to do is like you know have this grass all around this place but first we need to look at you know a big part of it and then you know move onwards All right. There you go. It's also lovely to see, like, you know, with red, you can see immediately where you draw, so therefore, you know, it's quite visible. It also saves a lot of problems. Like, I can draw over here, and I'm not problematic. Oh, I do. Uh, but, uh huh. Uh huh. Come on. Get underneath it. I said get underneath it. There you go. So it needs to be in this one. Alright, good. 
And then we're going to put this into a map. Yeah, map. Map. All right. So now we can just walk, uh, ride on this without any problems whatsoever. And then see how this looks. So now that we have done this, I want to see how this looks once we uh, add some color in. So we're going to go for green because, you know, that's the way to do it. And ah, yes, I see now. I see. Mm hmm. Detach canvas, unattach canvas, put the canvas back, no, uh, put it back, now we need, uh -huh. what the hell, what the hell is going on, because I'm missing here something. And I know I'm missing here something. So, uh, we're going to save this. I am not happy about this at all. I don't know where this went. This bit. I'm looking for that. So, we're going to go for the tools, scripts. Uh, no. Duckers. Yes. Toolbox. Yes, that's missing. Where is my toolbox? Where is the toolbox, my friend? Don't tell me it's on the other side. Don't tell me it's on the other side. Ah, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, well, fine. I will close this. I had a problem. I need to fix it. Therefore, I need to fix it again. I cannot have nice things on Monday, aren't I? No. Absolutely not. I'm trying to do my very best here, but uh, sorry guys if uh, if things go bad. Uh, all right, I will load this in now. Now tell me, where's the toolbox? The toolbox is over there. What? What is it doing over there? You piece of garbage! No, I am not right-handed. I am left-handed. Why is it there? Why in God's name is it there? Oh boy, uh, eh, no, 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 all right, uh, can I move this now, yeah, yeah, all right, we're gonna move it there, no, we're gonna move it on that side, we're gonna reduce this to that one, uh-huh, uh-huh, all right, and now we're gonna, Attach the things, yeah. Almost, almost. Hold on. Um. Mm, look at this. Uh, I found them. I found them. They were on the other side of the bloody damn thing. And now we need to move them from that way to that way. So. Uh, Do you touch again? Oh boy, I'm gonna not like this, aren't I? Nope. I'm not liking this. All right. Well. We need to put this inside of this one. So, eh? Alright. Now we need to get this. No, I need this to be there. God. Why in God's name did somebody design this this way? Why is it always so buggy? Why is it always so buggy? Oh my god. Ah, oh, no, no, no. No, I want this to be in there. Why cannot I do this in there? All right. Uh, all right. Uh, so we want this to be in there. All right, fine. Attach again, then. And we can see. Uh, attach. Well, 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 well. Where did it land? All right, it's still not there. Ah, oh, thanks. 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 Thanks, my friend. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why are you such an ass? I am not liking this at all. 
And it is fixable, that's the problem. It's fixable. It's just that, you know, when we're doing things my way, it doesn't do the things I want and I know when. Mm-hmm. Alright, fine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, big paint. No, 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 no. Yes. Alright, big vector. Alright. Now, attach yourself towards you again. Thank you, big vector. Now you're back. Good. Oh my god. Not having my day today, aren't I? Nope. Absolutely not having my day today. Especially with things like this. They're not fun. They're absolutely horrendous. Alright. Now I will select with the tool of the brush tool. I will select the color that I need. Then we're gonna breathe in slowly, realize that this is working properly, and now I can just, you know, pick up a color and be like, Ha, oh, I have picked up a color. How nice. Thank you, me. Also, why are you resetting to the old fashioned default of 10? I am disappointed already. So every single time I do this, every single time I load in, again, I have this default. All right. Anyway. Uh, we're going to go back to our cool-looking grass and try to color it in with a bit of color. There you go. Now we're going to be removing some bits of it. And we're going to realize that, you know, our coloring system right now, you know, it's just red with wood green. Uh, I don't care, really. It's just, you know, that I want to see how this looks from now. And then, you know, once we're done with this uh, kind of sketch, we will, you know, implement it into a bigger bigger picture. And then, you know, we're going to move on to the next one and to the next one part. And then we're going to fill up this whole damn place with grass. Because, well, you know, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Grass and then, you know, up butts. So, um, as you probably have already noticed, Greta is a little bit of an uh, iffy boy. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a bad when it comes to uh, certain types of things like you know doing things normally no 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 it doesn't like to do that so this is why it's still you know not fully uh, not fully developed and has constantly updates but the main problem is that sometimes you know sometimes things like these are you know just tiny little setbacks so you should not be too worried about it too much it's just you know very annoying to have like ah I always have been used to doing doing this, and then suddenly it's on the other side of the damn place, and I'm like, "Huh, what a coincidence!" But uh, yeah, um, this is why I like to do, you know, this is why I like this. This is also why I like Greta because it's just always keeping it simple. But oh boy, when it does something weird, I need to be like, you know, doing me smart moves, and then uh, you know, figure out what the hell is happening. Uh, well, anyway, nothing beats this uh, over a terrible p potato PC. Absolutely not. This is much better than potato PC. Potato PC was, uh, whew, that nah, was even worse. It's like, oh, you want to move now? Uh, yeah, about that. No, not gonna happen, mate. Yeah, potato PCs. Best potatoes. All right. So we can now see that this is like, you know, grass and see how this implements the thing. Or do I need to go for the old fashioned way of having big ones and then tiny ones with uh, around it. So what we're going to do now is going to do a very smart move. We're going to do alpha and we're coloring it in with black. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We have suddenly created grass without nobody noticing. So we can look at this and see like, ah, well, this is some rough grass, right? This is some rough grass. And we could fix this. Uh, I'm going to be using this to just, you know, get ourselves a little bit up and running. So since this is rough grass and uh, we want to, you know, color it in a bit, we, we're going to create also some non-rough grass because that's how this grass works. We have the non-rough grass right now, which is just, you know, bits by bits. But we do want to have some bits of it. So we're going to add in some more leeway on, you know, variety of grass. So we have like the rough, 
rough ashes grass and then we have like you know tiny bits of grass that you know represent the, the small bits of it and then that will follow up uh that will you know the the small grass will eventually you know add it into here so we have rough grass over we have rough grass over here and then we need to move it downwards but to create it downwards we need to look look like ah oh, well uh this is all grass well yes but this grass is actually technically like this instead so it's like you know big grass and then you know suddenly it's getting smaller and smaller until you know it's just you know this it's just this it's just this grass. That's the idea. It's uh, like you know, you want to, you want to implement like big grass, and then suddenly you want to change it to very small grass. That's that's the idea of it. So small grass over here, small grass over here, like very tiny grass. Some bigger grass over here. So this is like bigger grass. So not not that big, but that big. And then you have like rough grass over here. So this is like, you know, big grass, big lumps of it. And then, you know, we need to go like small, very small, a bit, a bit rough on the edges, you know, not, not too much, but, you know, a tiny little bit. And then, you know, add it in and then suddenly, you know, once, once we add to the point where we want to be, we're going to go for like uber small. So that's the idea. And you can now already see that uh, that's exactly how this is going to go. And this is actually a nice way of flowing on how the perspective is going to work. Like, you see the tree, you feel like the tree is already getting there. You know, you see the tree and you're going to be like, Oh, look at that, that tree is actually moving that way. Yes, it is. Now the question is, like, how do we going to get from rough grass to heavy grass to, you know, from rough grass to heavy grass to small grass to, you know, almost nothing? Um, it's, you know, you want to make it like a picture screen. So it's like, one image over there, one image over there, one image over there. And if you place them all together, you form one big picture. That's what I'm now doing. But... Um, to create depth, I need to make sure that, you know, the trees are not on a, they, the tree, the first tree that I see right now is actually technically on a hill. So this one right here is supposed to be going like this. That, that way we have this rough grass in the middle and then, you know, we're going to make it bumpy. We're going to make it a bit bumpy. So we're going to make, you know, it's not, it's not fully going downwards, but it is still going this way. But it is going to go bumpy. So we have like here we have like a rough bit. And then you know we're going to make it a little bit bumpy. So this one is bumpy. This one is a little bit bumpy. And then afterwards there is no bumpiness. This way it uh, creates a kind of feeling that it is you know. It's, it's, it's a structure. It's a forest. You know we, you don't walk on even ground in a forest. It mostly there are some holes, some roots, some rocks in the way. And it also gives us more opportunities like, you know, we could draw like, we could draw like something like, you know, a little, a little plant, you know, a little fern, for instance. We could draw that in there and then, you know, make that fern alive. And that way, you know, we have some cool little uh, appearances within the grass. Without ruining the grass, but we have appearances in the grass. So we have like a little fern that, you know, pops up and then, you know, goes with the with the grass to the bumpiness. So it, it will give more leeway to the bumpiness and then we can, can say like, well, in this grass we also want a rock. Well, you know, we can also build a rock in there. And that way, you know, we, we create like, you know, the environment that we already had before and then, you know, have like a little rock in there. And then, you know, we can say, like, well, we want a little snail on it. Well, we can do that as well, you know, a little snail or a little moss or something like that, you know, something something that is, you know, uh, a, a little bit more or less than rocky ground, but more like a decent ground. Also, I noticed that this part right here is like, it's, uh, the darkness here needs to be filled up with rocks. Therefore, you know, we can add that in. And then, you know, we need to make something like right over here. We need to make it like it's popping out. So that's the goal of it. So we have the we have like grass, some rocks here and there. You know, we can build some rocks in there. 
some rocks, and that way, you know, we, we, we create, we fill up this whole damn place. We fill it all up with, um, with grass, but not all the same grass. We want to fill it up with things and nooks and crannies so that, you know, it feels like a forest. If you ever seen a bloody damn grass field, you would have known that a grass field is a grass field full of grass. Yes. But if you look closely, there are also other plants, there are other things, the ground is not always stable. And when you go to a grass field that is, you know, mowed down, then you could say, yeah, it looks almost the same as always. Yes. True. But this is a forest, therefore it's lush. It may needs to make, you know, it needs to make you feel like this thing is like big, a very big forest. It needs to feel, uh, it needs to feel like a, a great, how do you say that, fantasy forest? Probably, I don't know. Eh, fantasy, fantasy. It's all a forest anyway. Like this tree is like as big as this moth. Yeah, true. That tree is as big as this moth, yes. But, that me that also says something about the size of the bird itself. Which makes it a little bit of a big one. All these trees are tiny. Eh, both ways. But I like, I like to see this moth being like a big, a big boy. Being a big boy. Being a big boy. It looks like a representation of a dragon, but it is a moth. So definitely not. Eh, it's all fine. Ah, yes. Now we have the problem of, you know, that we need to now draw over this. So we're going to do that. We're going to make, you know, we, we have our sketch. We know now what we're going to be aiming for. We know now what to do with it. So let's go. Let's, let's just have a fun with it. Because, you know, the best way to experiment on how to do this is always to know when to go for it. And not all the grass here and there is all the same, you know. It's not always the same grass. It's not always the same ideas that come around. And it's it's very important to understand that, you know, uh, I'm trying to do my very best here to create a landscape. And... Uh, you know, backgrounds are very hard to do. It's a, uh, it's a very hard thing to do. Like, for instance, right here, we have like a problem in the background. We need to fix that. Otherwise, we might not be able to do it. But we need to do it in such a way that it is not ruining the drawing itself. And that will be done. But you know, we need to make sure that we do it properly. So yeah, but uh, yeah, um, not everything has its own, you know, values. Some things have their own uh, setbacks, and you you want to realize that you know when you when you try to draw this this big epic tree, things might go a little bit bad. And the funny thing is, technically I could you know reduce the big size of this big giant bird if I want to, but I'm now like. I'm already committed. I'm not gonna be removing. I'm not gonna be reducing the size of this thing. I'm just gonna keep it that way, because it looks cool, and I'm just gonna build up things around it. I could technically, what I could do, is uh, make this tree this tree bigger, but because this tree is not fully in position, and you already see like, ah, oh, well, this tree is that big. And you can compare it, but it is still a way. What we could do is actually technically say like, well, this tree is actually very big. Then this tree in comparison is a bit smaller. That could also be a thing. It's still a big bird though. Even though if, if even if the other tree is bigger than the other one. But the grass is tiny, so therefore you know the bird is big. And I don't mind. It's a big bird, it's my mistake. I cannot fix that anymore, sadly, and, uh, well, you know, we're gonna live with it. It's now a big bird. It's a big bird, and, uh, well, you know, that's not a bad idea.
you know, makes the bomb even more scared to steal those treasures. Yep. The bomb is ain't gonna be doing jack shit here. <laughs> Especially when there's such a bird like this big uh, around, you know. And uh, we can see that, you know, the bird is a... It's a big boy. It can do its own stings, and we can even play some acts, you know. We can we can say like, oh, how how does this bird, uh, how does this bird, where does the bird lay his axe? Well, we could say that the bird lays his axe in the uh, in the grass, for instance. So we could make a nest in there, so it's on the ground instead of up the up up in the air and in the roofs because you know it cannot support its own wave, which technically could be correct though. Never underestimate the power of creativity there. Because we have a big bird and we say that the eggs are on the ground, it means that yes, if you would play the eggs on, on, on not on the ground, you know the bird would not be able to reach uh, reach it with its own size. The trees will probably fall off and the eggs will probably just be destroyed. Therefore, it is not logical to do so. And therefore, you know, it's smart. Because then you give the implementation, yes, it's a big creature, but how does it then lay his axe? Well, it's going to lay his axe in the, in the grassy ground. In the grassy ground where the crystals are. Uh, one, one, one thing you could say like, well, because the crystals are here, it means that the axe are getting powered up or, you know, energized. Therefore, this will also create this cool looking effect on the, on the bird itself. This explains the crystals in the skin. You know, because the because the axe got uh, the axe got affected by the crystals in the forest itself, and you can already see where this is going. It's it creates this cool environment, this cool idea alone that uh, gives you more leeway on represent uh, on a uh, story. You can you can see how this bird behaves, how this bird looks, what the bird does. And all by just, you know, observing the environment itself. You can see that the bird uses the crystals for its own power source. Which also implements that it might be able to use its crystals for certain types of things. Like energetic bursts or be able to, you know, harm other people or harm other critters or harm other beasts to hunt it down and eat it up. And that's normal. By the looks of the, uh, by the looks of the, uh, by the looks of the mouth, it's a carn uh, carnivorous kind of creature. And by the looks of its hands, yes, it will use its hands to probably, you know, dig in, and use its, uh, and then you or keep it in place while you know the uh, the back legs actually scratch it open, or the other way around, one way or another, you know, and keep his own wings safe from the distance. Because, you know, the wings are in such a way that they are butterflies, it means that, you know, the wings could be, you know, used for gliding distances. And, you know, he could use its front legs to just hop around and then, and then break it open. Like, uh, different predatory birds could do. So, now that we have done, you know, the first batch of it, we can now uh, focus on getting downwards. Why I'm not focusing on this part right here... Is because I want to go first down so that I can finish up the lines so that I can then see where we can end up all right all right let's continue so this forest is tiny compared to the bird the forest is tiny so we could say that yeah the forest is a bit tiny for its comparison and how does this bird eat and hunt well the bird will probably hunt outside of the forest even though the forest is tiny and then use its uh, use the crystals to guard I its axe because the crystals technically have this static electricity inside of them which then wards off other creatures also because the bird is big it also has its own defense mechanism so that it doesn't get hunted by things that are bigger Logical. Then it feeds on the other creatures because it needs energy to recharge. Therefore, you know, giving it giving it more leeway to like, ah, all right. This, so this creature hunts. This creature steals. This creature uses, steals crystals or steals jewelry because it thinks it's a crystal to use for consumption. So it will probably hunt like things that are magical, 
So it will probably swallow them up, like, you know, gobble it up and be like, mm, nom, 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 nom. Thank you for your donation. We will be very satisfied. So, yeah, that's that's the idea. The idea alone will create more like, ah, oh, man, we have to hunt these things, but they swallow, swallow that traveler's gear. Oh, hell no, I'm not dealing with a bloody damn magic stealing bird that uses its bird the uh, magic to uh, swallow its magic to feed its children or whatever or you know swallows it up and then puts it back out because you know magic magic thing gets consumed and then you know feeds it to the children something like that and then you know you could have predator or then you could have go then you could say like oh what does it hunt then well it technically hunts ma uh, slimy magical snails for instance yeah like big giant sluggy snails that he can just lift off with his front legs and then you know rip it to, uh, rip it to shit, uh, tears and then you know eat it up because you know technically he has the tools to do it so therefore you know he should and big bears won't even try to do it because, well, you know, bears is like, well, well, that's a big bear. Well, the bird is actually way bigger. Ah, well, that's a problem. Also, because the whole place is statically, uh, statically charged, <laughs> I probably don't think a bear is going to be even trying to do this. It's like, I will try to eat, I will try to steal this beautiful egg. Da -da 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 you know, you get like a shark trap. So therefore, you know, the eggs are safe. And tiny critters would not even bother. It's like, um, this whole place is like a minefield. Uh, no thank you. <laughs> because, you know, you, uh, the crystals are statically charged. Or charged at all. Charged by the magic inside of this forest. That's why it's so tiny. It's a magical forest that is tiny. Or, well, tiny compared to a forest. A forest is normally huge and big. Alright. Um... All right. Now we need to figure out like what do we want to do? Well, we probably want something like X to be represented here because well, it's a good place to go for X. And it also fills up a lot of screen. So, we want to go for X like we want to go for big huge chunky X. Big chunky X like a big X. Is that a big egg? That's a big egg. Well, we can go for like a bigger egg. So we're gonna go for a little bit bigger egg. Like, no, oh, that's a good, that's a good egg. That's a good egg. I like it. So we can say like, ah, well, these eggs are laying around, you know, laying around in the in the gra in 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 the in place, and they're deadlocked between you know rocks. So that's that's why. So how much eggs do we want? Well, we want one egg for sure. Then probably another rack right here. And then probably one rack right there. So now we have X. Uh, we have the X and we can say like, ah, oh, well, since the X are here, we can say like, ah, oh, well, how, how do these X are, you know, play in place? Well, they're, they're placed by rocks with mossy ground. Therefore, you know, they're safe. They're charged on a on a crystal right underneath it. Well, where is the crystal right underneath? Well, the crystal's right there, and you can see like you know it, they're glowing. They're they're glowing. They're glowing eggs that you know are very very gently placed on this place on this pillow with with grass around it. So, and then you know we have. We have one rock right there, one rock right there, one rock right there, and one, one there. So th th these are the eggs with all the stuff. And then we need also a rock right here. So now we know where the rocks are. And now we can continue working where, you know, the rocks are supposed to be placed. So we don't, we ignore the rocks now entirely and continue. 
And that's how you, you know, realize like, ah, well, look at that. Those rocks are cool. Yes, the rocks are cool. The rocks are really great when you try to do something and then suddenly, you know, you feel like, oh, that is some big rock right there. And yeah, it is true. It's a big rock and I really like it. But you need to be remembering that we're trying to, you know, implement this into a place where all the stuff is. It, uh, we want to create this magical feeling that, you know, we have rocks, we have grass, and all of this, you know, it's a rocky place, and that's already shown in the background here. It's a rocky place. It's a rocky place full of rocks. And the eggs are laid, laid in places where the rocks are placed uh, good, uh, in such a way that the eggs are, you know, placed underneath a breeding energy source. There you go, that's the word. And, yeah. It will keep them warm, it will keep them charged, and, uh, you know, once they're, once they're grown up, all those beautiful eggs are gonna pop up and, uh, you know, you see those tiny little moth hawks. Yeah, who knew? Who knew, who knew, who knew that that would be the thing that we're going to go for. So, since we are using a rocky ground, um, I'm going to be going for an uneven amount of grass. Because that's how grass works. It's an uneven amount. We need to go for, like, you know, big and tiny. We need to go for extreme grass and non-extreme non grass. Because that way, we create an effect that, uh, that will give us more leeway once we're, you know, continuing drawing. Or at least, you know, it will give me at least the leeway to continue drawing while uh, being a little bit fixed up. Although, you know, I have been tired. <laughs> and that is the thing that happens. Um, because today was actually a very uh, big day. Uh, a lot of information has been flown into my head. It's like, ah, thanks. Um, yes. I will keep this in consideration, and I will make sure that that is in that uh, I will make sure that that is correct. So, um, I did say this. So, um, ah, uh, all right. So yeah, a lot of things have been going around. I uh, I am busy working on uh, learning the manual, and uh, you know that that works all fine. It's just, you know, sometimes uh, things go a little bit uh, iffy on that side. All right. But uh, for the rest, I'm fine. It's just, you know, a lot of information. <laughs> when people speak to me, it's like, I need to know everything. And then, you know, totally forget about it. And then I need to realize it again. And it's like, ah, yes, yes, you again. And then I need to realize, like, ah, you were talking about this again. All right, cool. Um, so why do I do this properly now? Yeah, I'm doing this properly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, how long are we? We're on the 40 minute mark. Sweet. Oh, almost 40 minute mark. Two minutes left. So, yeah, more fork is gonna be, um, once the more fork is done, you know, we're drawing grass like a, like a mad lad. It's like, oh, how much grass do you need? It's like, I need all of it. All of the grass. Hand it over. I need all the grass I got. Because that's how the grass works, you know. I, I really, really, really appreciate on how grass grows here. And the more grass we the more grass we draw, the better it gets. The more grass we have, the more grass we gonna get, and therefore, you know, it's better. <laughs> I'm again, look now, it's like, man, that's a, uh, that already looks like a hill. See, I told you, hilly background, and we have rocky pit, and we have rocky bits, and we know that we have rocky bits. I probably need to lower down these trees to a little bit more of a level size, so we need to go like, bush, instead of up, so that is my problem with the uh, perspective right now, but uh, no worries there. We can still fix that. It's like, you know, we just have to move this a bit down and then point the paw towards that part. And that will also fix it. But we could also say, you know what? 
screw that idea, let's go upwards and go hilly. And that, that is also a way. So we could make it like a hilly forest, so, you know, we know that the Malfog is, uh, we know that the Malfog is a bit big. Yes, it is. But because it's a hilly, it means that, you know, it's an upwards idea. So therefore, you know, downwards probably will be big up trees because, you know, not all trees are big. Um, some trees are like six meters high only. And that means that this thing is only like three meters high. And I still have, and still could be providing an equal, uh, a very good eco-friendly eco uh, environment. So therefore, you know, no complaining there, actually. All right. So, um, how much time do we want to waste on this anymore? I think I will finish this up, this part right here. I want to finish this up and then I'm going to be saying like, I'm going to be doing the old fashioned way of saying, yeah, that's enough for today. Because um, it's a very hard thing to do, you know, it's like drawing with the bow project. It's a, uh, it's a big, a big amount. It's a lot of concentration that I need to learn about and it's a lot of ideas that need to be perfected. The main issue right now is like, you know, we have we have the grass that we need. We have the things that we need. The only thing is that we now need to amplify it. But because we're now at a current state where we need to design. Mm, design is the right word here. Because we need to design these eggs, we need to design the rocks on it. And then we need to implement the grass again. It means that we can. Uh, it means that we need to. Uh, how do you say that? Take. Uh, take. Right now we need to take it off. So we need to hold our horses, and say like, all right, that's good for now. It's good for today. And then tomorrow we will. Oh well, not tomorrow. Tomorrow will I do with. Uh, we'll work on the uh, facial expression again, but. The day after that, probably, I will be working on, uh, oh, cancel, I would just want to save, not open. Um, I just wanted to, uh, work on it. So, by splitting it up, by splitting up the work, even though, you know, we're like, what, eight minutes, uh, eight minutes too early? Yeah, eight minutes to 18 minutes too early, but it's still important. Because if I don't do it, I will probably get lost. I will probably make bigger mistakes than I already did with certain types of things. And it will prevent me from uh, losing the inspiration that I already have. Because I already have the design right here. I have the axe. I just need to make the axe. I need to make them look like the Morfog axe. And I need to make the rocks that are laying uh, underneath it to give... Uh, give the feeling of, you know, that they're eggs. The only downside is I need to design that and that will take more time. And I want to make sure that I go in there with a fresh mind like, all right, people, I have a blank mind. I can now try this again. And then, you know, boom, it's going to be going better. That's the idea. But, of course, that need, that that is also the cost of the idea. It takes time. But, as I always said, it's better to do it. Uh, it's better to do it slow and steady than uh, running a race fast and then realizing that you are in lots of debt because, well, you paid off the uh, uh, the gas company because uh, <laughs> you were you were riding in a car instead of running it. Oh well, that is an absolutely terrible joke. Jeez. Uh. Anyway, let's uh let's look at it then. So that we now know, let's let's judge it with our own eyes. So, we have our eggs, we have our eggs, and we have our sketch. So the tree, the the little vern plant is gonna be a thing that we need to draw. Yes, and the little egg plant right here, the uh, the little eggs on the rocks, needs to be also drawn. Yes, true. But if we look now at this grass. Do I think that this is a viable amount of grass, and do I think that this is decent looking? I would say yes, because of uh, one thing. If I remove this, I already can see that the eggs are laid there. 
you know, it's uh, the way of how the grass is manifesting on that point. So yes, there are re there are there are stuff laying around there, but those stuff are gonna be eggs. That's the most important part. So the eggs, they look nice, they look decent, they're decent enough, as big enough as the thing is could be. Uh, maybe they could be a little bit bigger, but I think like nah. I think these eggs are decent enough or on the size. And they are underneath the big giant crystal rocks that are everywhere. So probably I will also make some crystal rocks in the grass itself. To represent that there are crystals everywhere. The trees are growing underneath. Uh, the, tree, uh, the trees are feeding on the crystals. The, the bird is feeding on the crystals. Therefore it gains the energy. Therefore it gains the power. Therefore it also gains the ability to shoot lightning. Therefore the ecological benefit of playing the axe uh, with uh, therefore the equal benefit of having the axe underneath such a energy uh, energy place is that the axe will be faster hatching and therefore also the birds will probably be mutated because of the axe and therefore it has those crystals on the back hmm. explaining their power therefore it's good all right <sighs> Explaining ecological things in our drawing. Man, that's fun. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I will leave it here. And uh, thanks all for watching. And I hope we'll see you all next time. Until then, I want to wish you a lovely day. And uh, bye! <laughs>